Okay, so 6-2, we're going to use graphs to help find limits. So our goals for today is to find limits based on the end behaviors and on the values. And again, we're going to use graphs. So the first example, we have a graph here of a um, parabola. I'm going to stick the arrows at the end. Okay, and we have a parabola. However, this parabola has a hole with a defined value up here. So we are going to answer the questions along the edge and think about what this means in terms of limits. So the first question is find f of 3. So we want to know the value of the function. Remember, this is the function when x is 3. So we go to x is 3. Remember, there's a hole here, and the value jumps up to the point. The solid points are the values. So we read it across. The value at f of 3 is 3. The, then we want to know the limit as x approaches 3. It doesn't say plus or minus 3, so we're approaching 3 from both directions. So anytime you don't see a, if whether it tells you positive or negative direction, we have to assume we're coming from both directions. So we're coming from there and here. So we want to know what value is the graph approaching as we come from both directions along our function. And the value it's approaching is right here. It's going towards that value, which if we read across, I would say is almost one. If you want to say it's one, I think it's a rough sketch. Okay. Then we want to know the limit as X approaches positive infinity. So if we go along our graph to X is going towards positive infinity. So that means we're going in this direction, positive infinity, and we follow our function. What is happening? It's going on forever. So if it goes on forever, there is no limit. So we put that as DNE. DNE stands for does not exist. So there is no limit. It goes on forever. So anytime the limit, there is no limit to the graph, it goes on forever. DNE. So then we want us to know what the limit is as we go towards negative infinity. So negative infinity is moving this direction. So as we take our graph and we head in that direction towards the left, once again, the graph is going on forever. So we're going to say that this is no limit or does not exist. D-N-E. Okay, sorry about the noise there. So then if we move to the next example, example number two, this graph is a lot more complicated. You look at it, oh, there's curves here, there, there's holes, there's all kinds of things going on. So we're going to identify some terms. So the first term we're talking about is discontinuity. That means the graph is moving along and it stops and it jumps. Okay, so we can also think of that as jumps. So a discontinuity happens here. It jumps at x equals b. We're defining, the, the, these are not numbers along our x-axis, they're letters, so we have to define it in terms of the letter, so x equals b. If we keep moving along, and we move along here, the graph jumps again at x equals c. Okay. So those are where discontinuity happens. Where are the asymptotes? Remember, asymptotes are vertical or horizontal boundary lines that the graph approaches, that the graph approaches from both directions. So we have... a. A vertical asymptote at x equals, and this value is listed as a. Okay, so again, those are those boundary lines. The graph approaches from both directions. It approaches here and along here. Okay, and then it says any holes. So holes are openings in our graph. Otherwise, it'd be continuous, but there's a hole. So there's a hole at x equals 0. So those are the different terms we want to make sure we understand and what they mean. So asymptotes, the graph approaches from both directions. Discontinuity is when the graph jumps. And holes are when there's an open spot that's not included. Okay. So that's what we've got going on here. And where is the function undefined? The function is undefined at x equals a. Because we have no value. It cannot touch. It cannot include A. It does not have a value. Everywhere else, as this graph comes along, is going to include every value left to right. Because where there's a hole, open circle, there's a close below. So every value is included, except for at the asymptote. So now let's look at what is the value of F of 0. So F of 0 means what is the value when X equals 0. So if we go to X is 0, there's a hole here. The value is up at the solid point, which is 1. 
Right? And then it says, what is the limit as x approaches zero? And it doesn't say from what direction, so we have to go from both directions. So we put our arrow. I like to just draw these arrows so I can see I'm coming from both directions. So coming from the left and coming from the right, what is the graph approaching as we move towards zero? And it's going to be this point right here, which is negative 2. And I'm approximating the values because it's kind of hard to read f of c. So what is the value of the function when x is c? So we go over to where x is c and we look for the solid point. And if I read that across, negative 3. And then it says what is the limit as x approaches c? So we get back on our graph and we go towards c from the left and from the right. As we approach from the left, the answer would be somewhere around 2. From the right, it's somewhere around 0. We talked about in yesterday's lesson, if it's two different values, then it does not exist. There isn't a single limit, so therefore it does not exist. Okay? So this is, happens because of, there's different values. So you check from both directions. If the values are different, it does not exist. F of B... So we go to B and we look for the solid point and I'd read that across and say it's at 1. The limit, if we go from the left and from the right as we approach B, as you can see the value is different and if it has different values we say it does not exist. And now we're going to talk about the ends. As X goes towards positive infinity, so that's at this end, what is happening to the graph? So if we think about this, this graph looks like it's curving upward. It's going to continue to curve upward forever. Therefore, there's no limit. It does not exist. On this end, as x goes towards negative infinity, and we visualize this graph, this looks like a graph that's approaching the x-axis, right? And then it's probably going to go along the x-axis forever. So the limit here is going to be x equals 0, right? Or, as, or y equals 0. As we get closer and closer, we're limited to 0. Okay, so sometimes the end behaviors, if they're going to go on forever, they don't exist. If they are approaching a certain value, then you're going to put that value. So you're going to have a worksheet that's going to have similar type of problems. So the second page and the second problems on your worksheet are going to be sketching graphs of functions that work on this situation. Now there are a lot of answers you could draw for this. So there isn't a right Oh, a single right answer. So we're graphing a function. So I'm just going to make a quick coordinate plane that has a limit at x is 2. So let's go to put x is 2 on our graph. I kind of like to put a dotted line just so I can mark where the 2 is. Okay, so the limit is going to be at x is 2, but that limit is not the value of the function. So we know that we have to approach a value somewhere on 2 from both directions, but it can't be included. So I'm just going to do a nice linear graph from both directions. So it has a limit from the left and from the right at x is 2. However, the value is not 2, so that means it has to be open circle. But it does have a value somewhere, so therefore we can put the point anywhere else on the line. I'm going to put it down here, and I'm just going to put a couple points here at negative 3. So what we are looking at is the limit as x approaches 2, f of x equals, and it's going towards, let's say this is positive 2, but the function at 2 is not 2, but rather negative 3. So we have a function that has a limit at 2, but that's not the value. And now we've drawn that. Could we have put this somewhere else? We could have shifted this whole line up, down. It could have gone diagonally left instead of up. It could have done a lot of different things. Um, we could have made a curve instead of a line. As long as we had that open circle and it approached that value from both directions, we met the first part of it. And then as long as there's a point not in that open circle, we met the second part. So then example four, sketch a graph of a function that is defined at x equals negative 1. So let's go to negative 1 and put our dashed line. So the answer is going to be negative 1. And it doesn't say what the value is, so let's just put a point. So there's the value at negative 1, and I'm just going to put some dashes here. Okay, so f of negative 1, in my case, is 2. You could put it anywhere. So it's defined at negative 1, but the limit as the graph approaches negative 1 does not exist. So the, when it does not exist, it means it, that when you come from the left, right, when we move from the left and then move from the right, 
However, we're coming along. They have to have different answers. So this would be a situation kind of like this. Coming from the left and coming from the right, the value is not the same. So therefore, the limit as x approaches negative 1, f of x would be does not exist because it has different values coming from different directions. So those are just one option out of many options to draw this. In fact, when I did mine earlier, I'll show you right now, I drew the line the same but put my point in a different point here. And then on this one, you can see my graph is completely different as well. So there are endless ways to draw this. The key is that the certain features must be met. So you're going to have a worksheet in which you have to sketch graphs of functions just like this. Again, your answer could be different than someone else's. It doesn't mean it's incorrect. 